Welcome to Bike World, welcome to Mallory Park, but more importantly, welcome to the new Norton V4 SV. <laughs> Look at that, that is stunning. But some of you with a keen eye would have noticed that that looks pretty similar to the bike that they launched a few years ago. And to be fair, it is. That's the bike that they developed at the Isle of Man TT, and that's the bike they put into production. But with new investment from India, from TBS, Norton have had a huge transformation. So they've essentially taken the old bike, stripped it back to its bare bones, found a few faults and niggles, rebuilt it, recalibrated everything, and given us a new model that will be on sale very shortly. And they've kindly invited us to Mallory Park, and we've got an afternoon on track where we're gonna try the new V4 SV on road tires, on road settings, because this is a road bike. So time to put the leathers on, put the visor down. I feel so sorry for Chris at home. These videos only happen because of the support and help from our sponsors. Support the companies that support us. What you could do, is just to be a little bit cheeky, if you want to see who's behind you, press and hold the button. See it says camera. So now I can push that button again, and you've got your rear view camera. So mature. It's a good job Chris is in here. Yeah, I mean, you bring the mature guy. Let's start with a little history lesson about Norton and it all depends on how far you want to go back because I believe it's one of the oldest motorcycle brands. Norton were famous for their TT success on the Featherbreds with Jeff Duke and then moving to the modern era it was Steve Hislop, 92, Rotary Norton. So then we moved to the modern era of Norton and then Mr Stuart Garner took over the famous brand. Now what he did was he was full of ideas and aspiration but kind of lacked money but we won't go too much into that. But interestingly, what Norton did was they developed their bike publicly. Now, all the rest of the manufacturers, Ducati, Aprilia, all the Japanese, develop a bike privately in secret testing, and then they give it to people like me. What Norton did was they developed their bike at the TT, arguably the hardest, most demanding racetrack in the world. And they publicly developed the bike year in, year out, year in, year out. till so they got to a stage where the bike was lapping the TT at 130 miles an hour with Davo Johnson and Josh Brooks albeit with a MotoGP Aprilia engine, but still impressive chassis. Obviously we know what happened to that era of Norton and it's been taken over by TVS, who've invested a huge amount of money into the famous Norton brand. And what they've essentially done is got that bike that was first developed at the TT, stripped it back to its bare bones, found all the negatives and criticisms, which they've publicly admitted to. I believe there was 40, well, just shy of 40 faults. And they've rectified those faults. So they've gone through the chassis, they've gone through the engine, they've changed the cooling, new frame, new technique for welding, completely new engine internals. They've looked at every little different component from fork selectors to uh, chassis mounts and redesigned it and come up with a new bike, which is what we have today. Essentially, the, the rake, the trail, the wheelbase, the chassis is what was developed at the TT back in the day when Josh Brooks and Davo were doing 130 miles an hour. And essentially, the 1200cc V4 is what was developed back then, but now with new reliability that's been proven on a test bed. We've been talking to the engineers here and they've happily putting this engine on the dyno for 100 hours. It's done extensive testing, which to be fair, was never done on the old bike. So now we have a reliable V4 SV Norton that will be on sale. The only slight downside to that is it's taken so long for development by such a small team. We are behind the performance figures. When this bike was originally 
supposed to be produced, it was on par with the competition. But now we've got a quoted 185 horsepower. And if you're not in a 200 horsepower club, you're kind of knocking on the door wanting to get in. And we're also down on torque and we're a little up on weight and we're not the same with the rider rates. It's a little bit for me, it's a little bit comparing uh, Lotus to Ferrari. You know, Lotus just don't have the budget, they can't match what Ferrari are doing. In the same way, Norton have developed this bike with such a small team, where you compare it to Ducati, you've got MotoGP and World Superbike technology that they can fall back on. But away from the lap times and those peak power figures, it's an impressive bike. I think it really looks good. I loved it when it first came out and I rode the original bike and I thought it looked fantastic. And it's still got that look, it still looks like the original. And yes, here at Mallory Park, if we put a stopwatch on it and we brought on an RSV or an S1000R or any of those modern thousands, it would lap quicker than this V4 Norton. But I think you're missing the point if you're looking at lap times. Norton have specifically not given us race tires. They're specifically not given us tire warmers. They've just let us roll out a pit lane and ride it like a road bike. This is on road pressures with road settings conventional Orleans, not semi-active, you adjust the suspension accordingly. And as a road bike, you've got to remember what it's doing. It is slightly behind in terms of performance, it is slightly behind in terms of lap times, but as a road bike, it feels good, it handles, it's ticking boxes of emotion and it sounds great. If you want to be nitpicking, the, the ABS is a little intrusive and so is the traction when we compare it to the, to the V4S or the RSV which has got perfect electronics but again we're not comparing like for like I don't think you know a prettier's budget and Ducati's budget is colossal compared to what we have here with Norton so you've got three rider modes which is a checkered flag on the TFT dash and then a picture of a road on the dash and then a picture of nice rainy droplets on the dash which is obviously your race road and rain you've still got the reverse camera which is what the original bike had which is really cool so you press a button and the whole dash turns into a rear camera but that doesn't replace the mirrors, you've still got conventional mirrors. We started off in the conventional road mode and after a few laps you can tell that it is quite restrictive. When you brake really heavy you can feel the intervention of the corner in ABS and on the traction you can feel it pulling it back slightly. So you flick it into the race mode, you have less TC, less brake intervention and a little bit sharper on the throttle. You can still feel the ABS working and the TC, you can see that illuminating all the way as you go around Gerard, especially on these Dunlop road tires. And to be honest, the technology is not really on par with some of the competition. For example, you've got those three modes and you have a six axis IMU, so everything is lean sensitive. So you have lean sensitive ABS, anti wheelie, lean sensitive traction control, but there's no way of trimming those modes. I've just got the three modes and that's it. So I can't reduce the TC or add the TC or turn off the anti-wheelie and have uh, ABS off on the rear. It is as it is, it's three modes and that's it. And when you are in the road modes, they are quite intrusive on the track. And I think if you put slicks on this bike, you'd, they're gonna be a little bit intrusive even in the race mode. But again, it's that difference between the technology and the money and the budget compared to what we have with Aprilia and Ducati, for example, who've got phenomenal electronic. The quick shifter works really well, nice and smooth, it sounds really good, the engine braking into corners is nice and smooth. The big test is going to be when we get the bike on the road because essentially it has been designed for a road as a road bike designed at the TT and that's what I'm looking forward to doing. we get another session but there's no difference between the black one and the silver one apart from one is black and one is silver it's great to see british engineering back up and running as well and it's great that the indian company tvs has invested heavily with norton but everything on this bike is made here in the uk the engine is built in the uk the bike is welded the chassis is put together everything is put together in the uk and for me it reminds me of that kind of british engineering the the caterums and the lotus and the and the TVRs and the kit cars that were going up against the big brands. And that's what it's doing, it is going up against the big boys. But as I say, it's gonna be fun to get it on the road. We need to put some mileage on this bike. So hopefully on the next test, we can give it a good thrashing in Wales. Might be turned for Chris to give it a run.